we would make a change in the, in the program and then find out later on that that actually is having a bad social performance. There were a lot of assumptions about what our clients were that didn't turn out to be true. Microfinance institutions worldwide are helping millions of people improve their families' lives. But are their programs as effective as they could be? Are we reaching the people that we try to reach? Are we delivering the, the right services? And are people really using and benefiting from our services? Many organizations get so wrapped up in the day-to-day -day issues of are we achieving financial sustainability? How do we increase the return on assets? That they don't turn around and look and say, well, are people coming out of poverty? MFIs everywhere are discovering that effective performance management requires both a financial and social perspective. We've spent so much time in the industry on strengthening our understanding of financial performance and financial reporting. We've spent very little time on social performance. We can't just assume it's happening. You can't just assume that because people are repaying their loans, that means that you're doing great and you don't actually need to follow up and see how those people are doing or how your internal systems are working. Hundreds of MFIs have developed strategies to reach clear social goals and consider financial and social outcomes in every decision they make. Two of them share their experiences with us. My family didn't have enough food. Some days, I didn't have enough fuel to cook food. Now, I'm not lacking for anything. I am the boss of my own business. Seth. The Small Enterprise Foundation serves more than 50,000 women in rural South Africa by offering loans and facilitating savings. SEF is financially sustainable and has earned an alpha social rating by Microcredit Ratings International. SEF specifically targets the clients who live below half the poverty line. And they are women. 99% of our clients are women. For SEF, creating opportunity starts with knowing its clients. For this, it relies on its field agents or development facilitators, each of whom is responsible for around 300 women. I see myself as a leader of these women. Seth brought me here to work with you. I am Seth. One of the things they talk about is that their field staff should have a banker's brain and a social worker's heart. And that culture is part of the way of thinking of everyone in the organization. What I love more than anything is working with the women. I see her as my own daughter. I used AMK's loan, first of all, for rice planting. Second, I bought a cow. And then I bought a motorbike. The motorbike is for my son, who travels to work in Simria. AMK. Encore Microfinance Kampuchea offers loans and savings to more than 150,000 rural Cambodians. AMK has achieved operational self-sufficiency while growing 50% per year and has received alpha social and financial ratings from Microcredit Ratings International. What makes AMK different in Cambodia is our rural poverty focus. AMK goes to the areas where other organizations aren't, where people, you know, people have no other opportunities to receive loans. The challenge on our side is to be able to do that in a cost-effective way. Like SEF, AMK relies on field agents called client officers to be the human face of the organization. Even though our loans are smaller than those of other institutions, they still provide a lot of opportunities. To support its rapid growth, AMK asked each client officer to serve a large number of clients, around 600. The challenge to the client officer is to attend to so many clients' needs. In response, AMK has developed a way to give the client officers on-the-ground assistance. Village bank presidents. If anyone needs a loan, I inform AMK and help people in the village to have businesses. So in a sense, we've pushed down the decision-making to the village bank present level. Not only decision-making, but the problem-solving. So our client officers are able to be much more efficient. And when they're more efficient, we're able to reach many more clients overall. With AMK, you can earn more income. 
We have earned twice as much, but we still don't have anything left, just enough for food. Yes, I'm worried. I'm worried if I become sick, no one will feed my children. Organizations that manage their social performance can respond quickly when things go wrong. One of the things that we have learned is how vulnerable rural households are to any type of crisis. You could give somebody a loan and their business could be doing very well, but all it takes is one shock, one sickness, one death, and they come crashing down very quickly. There is always a risk that a microfinance institution's policies can make its clients even more vulnerable. Microfinance gives loans, and loans are debt, and if you're in debt, you're more vulnerable. When bad things happen, what do we do about it? Is there some way we can be flexible in terms of um, loan repayment? Can we put in products that will help people deal with the problems when they happen, such as insurance? Seth helps distressed clients in a number of ways. It encourages them to build up their savings as a cushion against hard times. I talk to them about their savings. I explain that they are not doing it for self. It is for their own benefit. If savings account records or declining value of the business indicate that a client is at risk, the development facilitator visits her more frequently. I try to learn what's wrong. I may find she's a runaway. Sometimes her husband is abusing her. I make sure the center knows about it. I try to help solve the problem. Yuyu has helped me a lot. When we give up, she encourages us. Like Seth, AMK encourages its clients to build up their savings. It also offers emergency loans of up to $100 as a buffer against setbacks. One member needed help because her children were sick. Her children and husband were infected with dengue fever. Yes, three of them, two children and a husband. I used the money to treat them. I have already paid it back. They have all recovered. I don't know where else I can get such a loan. Protection against client setbacks is critical. When clients have problems, so do MFIs. If you don't really check how your clients are doing, you'd be running a huge risk of losing a lot of clients, developing a bad reputation. You run the risk, obviously, of losing money. And a lack of focus on the social goals of microfinance can jeopardize the reputation of the industry as a whole. Already we're seeing some examples where people are saying, this organization is exploiting poor people. Many people say that the interest rate that we're charging is too high. Up to now, organizations have not been able to respond to that. All they've been able to do is to say, our, our mission is to reduce poverty and we're serving lots of people, but that's not good enough. If we can't measure the result and we can't measure exactly what it's costing us to provide the services, then we will run into big, big problems in the future. Experience shows that social and financial performance go hand in hand. It's the balance of both that makes sense. Microfinance is of no use to clients if we are not sustainable enough to stay. At the same time, it's of no use to clients if we are not able to see what they need and to provide what they need. We need strong financial performance in order to be able to raise the capital that we need so as to reach more and more and more people. The finances is the tool towards achieving the social objective. Managing social performance does not mean sacrificing financial performance. We don't think of social performance as a trade-off in any way. The social performance, when it's done well, makes good business sense because you know your clients better. There is substantial research which suggests that institutions of all kinds that manage their social performance in a strategic way perform better at the bottom line than those who don't. It also helps build a more transparent and accountable industry. Social performance management certainly helps focus an institution on its own performance. But at the same time, it helps communicate its own performance and its own objectives out to a larger audience. The main investors interested in expanding microfinance are the socially responsible investors. They really want to see that the institutions are supporting are, in fact, making a difference. I think what we're going to be seeing is more institutions taking on social performance management as a way to distinguish themselves from the competition.
Managing social performance is clearly beneficial, but what is required? The first step is to be clear on what you want to achieve and how. You have to do everything with intention. Am I reaching the people I intended to reach? Is the mix of services that I'm providing them having the impact that I want it to have? Are they being delivered correctly? The range of goals can be quite broad. Social performance management can be useful regardless of what your social mission is. It doesn't have to be just about poverty. It doesn't have to be just about empowering women. It's much broader than that, in fact. As Seth discovered, attaining the goals you have set for yourself isn't always as easy as it seems. Seth was started with the aim of reaching the very poor. And we thought that, well, if we go out to very disadvantaged areas, that only the very poor would come for these very small loans. But after we'd been operating for about two years, we would see that there were people who were running even smaller businesses than what our clients were running. At that point, we really started to challenge ourselves and say, are we reaching the very poor? And it was then that we had to say, well, no, it seems not. So let's develop a targeting methodology, let's try that and see what happens. You can't always expect the poorest people to come forward to you. Sometimes they don't have the self-confidence to believe that they even deserve a loan. So you've really got to go out to them. So then what we did is we set up separate branches from our old program, totally new branches, to try this new methodology. So a new program was created. You'll find that the program that serves the poorest has got a better repayment rate always has had, right from 1997 until today. Once an organization defines its social goals, it must collect reliable information to track its progress toward those goals. If you're about a social mission, measure it, look at it, think about how your changes affect your social outputs. Seth and AMK both rely on field staff members to gather the most basic information. After every loan cycle, our development facilitators conduct a, I don't really like to call it an interview, more like a conversation between them and their clients to find out how they have progressed in their lives. It's a survey that follows all the basic information about a household. We look at consumption, we look at how much they consume in food, we use it as a proxy for income how their livelihood is and how they have changed over time. The conversation is supposed to help the client also assess how they are progressing. Early on, Seth learned to use information from the field as an early warning indicator of problems that needed to be addressed. In 1994, staff were working furiously, but the organization wasn't growing. 50% of our clients would leave after finishing a loan. Client exit is something that often you hear as a financial performance indicator. But in Seth's situation, they realize that people leave primarily because they're having problems. Every month we produce a report on our dropout rates broken down by branch and then by area, so you can see basically how each staff member is performing. So it's part of the individual staff incentives, it's part of the manager's staff incentives, it's part of the performance measures for the whole organization. Now we're actually putting a greater value on the incentives, people can earn more for higher retention, and it's rewarded more frequently. Managing social performance also means aligning the organization to fit its social goals. If social performance management isn't systematized within an organization, inside the daily flow of an organization, it will be costly, very difficult, and in all likelihood will be abandoned in some corner of the institution. AMK was the first MFI to set up at the board level a committee to focus on social performance. And they see it as a committee that balances the audit committee on the financial side. The social performance committee actually advises the board. And the idea is that these people can clean up all, all this information to make it more accessible to the board, to kind of summarize what are the main points of social performance in AMK. A dedicated and informed staff is critical to effectively managing social performance. Making sure that every staff member are knowledgeable and in sync with, this, with the mission of AMK is actually the tricky part because AMK is growing really, really, really fast. So there are new members every month. We spend a total of 10 days training new staff members. In addition, we have monthly training sessions. 
So if branch managers or department managers find any staff shortcomings, we can provide training immediately. Next few weeks actually we're, we're getting together for our annual staff retreat. And this is an important time too for stressing the mission and for all the staff to remember, okay, this is what we're about and this is why AMK exists. One of the most valuable things that one can do is to set up systems, very simple systems, that get your staff to be thinking about social performance all the time. We have developed and facilitators sitting with clients before every loan cycle and asking clients, how is it going with your food intake? How is it going with your family? They really internalize that their work is about improving people's lives. I have a good relationship with my clients. Sometimes my clients invite me to four or five different events on the same day. And it's equally important that staff members themselves are treated well. If staff are not fairly treated, they will always work in a resentful way. They will always slowly but surely undermine the mission of the organization. If staff are treated like human beings, they will treat others like human beings. One thing we do every year is to do a staff satisfaction survey to hear directly from our staff, you know, what are the areas of discontent, what are the problems, so that we're not an organization that's really helping the poor but treating our staff poorly. And I think that's been demonstrated in low staff turnover. Effective performance management means balancing social and financial decision making throughout the institution. At its most basic, it's just having an awareness of the social goals of the organization and making sure that at all levels of the organization, people are thinking about those goals when they make decisions. It can be especially important in guiding product development. There was this assumption of a client is a farmer and he will use or she will use the loan for buying fertilizer and it needs to happen only at this particular month of the year because the harvest is once a year. And once we started analyzing data from clients, we realized that they use the loan for multiple purposes, not only for fertilizer. So once you start getting a, a better picture of what your client looks like, you start realizing that the organization needs to create systems for flexible products for people. Managing social performance also allows an organization to carefully evaluate new policies before putting them to work. Where we want to make changes to anything that we do. We'll first of all do a pilot and we'll watch quite carefully how does it affect clients, this change that we're bringing about. There's a very interesting example from AMK. They did some client satisfaction surveys and got back a message from the clients that the loan sizes were too small. And they, they didn't just take that information and say, well, our clients need larger loans. They said, well, who are we hearing from? And it was the not so poor which were saying it the most. So for the very poor, they weren't complaining about the loan size. A loan is a debt. And if we give this very poor person too much debt, I mean, the, the shame is on us. So unless organizations are very careful to think about who they're listening to, they can risk this quite a common problem of adapting your services to the strongest clients and gradually drifting away from your target clients. Managing social performance is not in itself a destination. It is the path to a more complete fulfillment of mission. It's best to start small and keep things simple. One of the things I've seen in many, many cases is that organizations try to collect too much information. One way to start would be to have one question. For example, are we reaching the people we want to reach? Then maybe they could introduce a second question. Are our services right for the people that we want to serve? One step follows another. Organizations become stronger. Investors grow more confident and more clients benefit. It's really an evolving process. We've done some really good things. I think we've, we have a lot to be proud of that we've, that we've done in terms of helping people, helping large numbers of people. I'm really proud that we can reach people who are very poor and see significant changes in their lives. I can see changes. A first-time borrower is different from one on her fourth loan. It makes me happy to see my clients improve their lives and to see their children get a more advanced education. My business is better than before. I earn three times as much. I am so thankful to have this opportunity so I can support my children. I've come a long way. 
I even prayed to God asking him to add more days to my life because now life is much better.